All right, so a couple of items. I just said we're going to cover three different things. We're going to cover um, TAFMs, TAFMs date, 1405 service. 12741 conversions. You're going to understand the why and why people want to do certain things when we get done. And then we're going to round it off with Mr. Scott, and he's going to talk about um, some other service date uh, topics that are important to all of us. So those will be the three sections. Um, I wanted to touch base real quickly on the FSS E line. I wanted to just send kind of a reminder when you all have an immediate pay or benefit impacting case. So um, for example, someone's orders uh, come through uh, deers, you guys process the orders and arrows, and maybe the deers part did not flow correctly, and the person has a, a family emergency and they need their medical care. That is an example where we want you to use the FSS E-line after the incident has already been put into the system. We want you to call us and tell us exactly what's going on with that person's case so that we know to appropriately um, move that to the front of the line, okay? So I just wanted to put that quick reminder, FSSE, we would like your wing members to vet all of those sorts of issues through the force support squadron so that you guys can make sure that it is truly at ARPC's level to work it and not something that's still waiting at base level. So we wanted to encourage you guys to make sure that you're using that line. We're getting lots of emails for help that are true emergencies. And we wanna make sure that you know, when you call the FSSE number, um, you are calling this building and we will um, try to handle that case appropriately and timely. Um, when you're calling the 1-800 uh, number, the 1-800-525-0102, you're calling the Total Force Service Center at Randolph Air Force Base at um, AFPC, okay? So just uh, distinguishing the two different phone numbers that folks are calling. So if you want a normal status check, um, have a basic question, please do use the TFSC for that, those types of things. I also wanted to tell you, we don't have our topic yet for our October training. So hopefully we will have that um, shortly and have that worked out. But for November, we're very excited. We're gonna partner um, with NGB and we're also gonna partner with um, the Training and Education Center um, at McGee Tyson. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a MyDex demo. Um, we're gonna do a writing class. The TEC is gonna put on a, a narrative writing class for decorations. And then um, NGB, we'll let the reserve get off at that point because we're going to talk about some NGB and, and Air National Guard specific topics in regards to um, awards and recognitions. So just putting that out there for your November calendar um, for that training class. Um, let me get you the date because I don't have my calendar up in front of me, but that'll be the third Wednesday in November, which will be on the 16th. Okay, so just put that as a placeholder in your calendar. And without further ado, I'm going to pass you over to Master Sergeant Rossi, and he's gonna get the training started. Over to you. All right, thank you, Chief. Oh uh, yeah, like I said, I'm Master Sergeant Rossi. I'm the lead for the AGR retirement section here at ARPC. Um, just some of the stuff um, that we're gonna be going over today. You can go ahead and slide, Chief, thank you. Uh, we're gonna do like an overview of what TAFMs are, uh, 1405, um, and then just kind of the service dates, um, our responsibility here at ARPC. And then we'll get into some of the calculations. This is a good time if you don't already have your a GR both sir from Mill PDS up. Um, if you can grab that, we're going to kind of do some uh, hands-on calculations just to kind of help you guys kind of understand the process. Um, and if you were when you're actually doing it, definitely helps uh, solidify that information. Um, and then when we, and and with some questions now, if you have some questions during the um, during the presentation, just put those in the chat if you could please. Um, the note, so this training is intended for unit FSS, CSS, and MPF members. Um, now, obviously, I'm not saying that unit members can't do this, um, but some of the data points and stuff like that, um, only the, the unit CSS, FSS, and MPF will have access to. Um, so again, just kind of a side note, this is intended for um, just for unit personnel. Slide. Okay, so um, this, this slide is just kind of an overview. So we have uh, here at ARPC, we do calculate the TAFMs date um, and the 1405 service date, but we, we usually don't do that. Um, actually, per AFMAN, we will not do that until they have 18 years TAFMs. All right, so, um, so this training is if you have a member who is, doesn't quite have 18 years and they want to plan for their retirement, mostly their pay, a lot of the calculators out there, they need their 1405 service date and also their TAFMs date. So this is something where you could help your members calculate that so they can put that in that calculator and at that point they can plan better for their retirement and their, the pay that they'll get um, once they get into that, ret that retirement status. 
Um, so once they do, so obviously you can calculate a form before the 18 years. Uh, once they hit the 18 years, we do ask them just to submit a MyPERS ticket. You can do that on their behalf, but they can always do it. Just all you have to put on there in the subject line is, you know, requesting uh, 1405 and TAFM's date um, calculation. We'll go ahead and do that calculation manually and we'll send it um, to them via the MyPERS ticket. They can at that point go into the numerous calculators and they can get um, an estimate of their pay. Now, if they if you don't have time to do that, we there is a calculator out there that will calculate the pay. It's a it's a rough estimate. Um, it's actually pretty close, um, and that is on the Air Force Benefits website, and that's that link that we have right there. And they can actually. Um, so I went in today. Um, uh, it's a CAC login pulls all my information over um, from I believe Mill PDS. So all the information is all, already on there. All I had to do is put my um, my estimated retirement date. Now for, um, for AGR retirements or active duty, it's gonna have your TAFM's date already on there. And then it's gonna, um, it has to be a date that's 20 years past that TAFM's date. So I put that date in there, put it calculate, and in the next page, all it is is your, your estimated pay for the month. So it was really, really nice. Um, it's very well put together. Now, if you have your 14.0 service, 1405 service date, it does give you a better estimate of what your pay will be. Um, but there is a calculator out there that, that does not require that. Just to let you guys know, you give that over to your, your members. Slide. Okay, so calculating TAFMs. Now, I kind of want to get into like what TAFMs is, all right? So when we say TAFMs, that's a total active federal military service, all right? So when we have a TAFMs, that's all based on your active duty, all right? So on the very bottom of that page there, I did take this off of the GR both. And so when I say active duty, that's a type duty or a TD code of one, two, three, four, or five. All right. So anything higher than that, that's going to be considered inactive duty. And we'll kind of get into that once we get into the 1405 service dates. Um, so TAFMs. All right. So just straight from the AFMAN, TAFMs date is later than the original uh, date of original entry on active duty by a period equal to the breaks in service. So now if you were REGAF and you were on continuous active duty, your TAFM's date would be the same as your diet state, right? But that's not what we're dealing with here. A lot of times we're dealing with guard and reserve members on a traditional status, uh, drill status guardsmen or traditional reservists that just kind of go back and forth between either AGR orders or, um, you know, just doing, going back to a traditional status where they're not on continuous active duty. So these dates are going to fluctuate, all right? So TAFM's date and 1405 service date, those dates fluctuate. That's why we, we do it at the 18 year mark, all right? Because Usually at that time and not in obviously every case is different, but usually the 18 year mark, they're either in sanctuary or they're at least closer to their retirement date. So that date, um, the TAFM's date and 1405 service date, they're not gonna, it's not gonna fluctuate as much um, for their last two years of service. So going into the calculations. All right, so the only document that we use here at ARPC is the GR both serve from no PDS, all right? Now, the two data points are the TAFMs and a points accrued to date. Now, you can get that also off the virtual MPF grip. So it doesn't really, you don't necessarily need to get it from the GR both, but make sure that you have those two data points. All right. So just kind of pointing down here, that's where you would find it. It'll be on the GR both upper left hand corner, that, or sorry, the upper right hand corner would be the TAFMs. And if you scroll down to the second page under the service history, um, they'll have the points accrued to date, which is also their last closed out R and R. So essentially on the form, everything on the form should be correct as of, so in this case, 13 September, 2021. So that's what their TAFMs was as of the points accrued to date. So that's the two data points we need. And what we're gonna do is um, kind of in layman's terms, we're gonna take the points accrued to date and we're gonna try to find the exact date um, that was so um, based on their TAFM. So from 13 to 7, 2021, we're going to take 18 years, 10 months, and 21 days from that. And that date is their TAFM's date. Okay. And I'm going to show you kind of how we do that on the next slide. All right. Okay. So like I said before, taking those two data points, we're going to take the points accrued to date. We're going to subtract the TAFM's from that. Okay. So for the example, we're kind of using the same example all the way through. We take the TAFM, so 1810. So what we're gonna do essentially is make a, a 
subtraction equation, right? So we all remember in, in elementary school, we did the subtraction. Okay, it's going to be the kind of the same rules of that um, in this equation. It's going to be a little bit different because we're going to be using days, months, and years. So just be aware the days column always goes up to 30 days. Anything over 30 days will get pushed over left to that months column. Um, and then obviously years is in, in 12 month increments. Um, so when we're borrowing, when, when we kind of get into this equation, uh, it makes a little more sense um, um, when, when we're actually borrowing months or years from the column to the left. All right, so when we're starting on this equation, we're gonna start all the way to the right. So we're in the days column, all right? And just like back in elementary school, when you, you can't subtract the smaller number from a bigger number. So in this case, the 13 is smaller than the 21. So what we're going to do is we're going to borrow 30 days from the months column. Okay, so we're going to borrow 30 days. So 30, at that point, now we got 30 plus 13. Okay, so the original 13, and that's 43. Now, since we got a bigger number than the smaller column there of the Tapums, we can go ahead and subtract the 43 from the 21. And that's going to be 22. Now, Little sidebar on the days column. All right. So going kind of back up to that note. So if we're in, if so, in, in subtracting inclusive dates, we're going to add one day to the remainder. All right. So in this case, since we're coming up with the Tapham's date, we're going to add one day. So on that days column in the very bottom down there. So the 43 minus 21 equals 22, but we're just going to add one. So 22 plus one equals 23. And that'll be our days. All right. Now we're going to move shift over to the left of the month column. So we just borrowed um, one month. So not instead of the nine, now we have, we're left with eight months. All right. Now, if you look, eight is bigger, or sorry, eight is smaller than 10. So now we have to borrow from the years column. Okay. So now over to the left, we're going to grab a year from that 2021. Okay. Which is 12 months. We're going to borrow because we have to convert it over to months. So 12 plus eight now is 20. And we're going to take 20 and we're going to subtract that by 10. 20 minus 10 equals 10. So that would be your months now. All right, so now we're going to shift over to the, the years column. Now, since we borrowed that year, now we're left with 2020 instead of 2021. So 2020 minus 18 is 2002 or 2002. Okay, so now your Tathom's date, you're left with 23 October. 2002. And if anyone has questions um, while you're working your your own point credit summary, um, please come off of your mic and uh, ask your question because we have the chat disabled right now. Would you mind putting it on the slide that showed the calculation? Do you see it now? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Hey, ma'am, go back to the Tafums data. It should be back a couple slides. Yeah, up one more slide, sorry. No, I'm sorry, forward. Um, forward, not back, forward. One more. There we go. I had a question about the added extra day. I thought we only added the extra day whenever you had a, like a year, month, and day instead of like a period of time, like the Tatham's date is, the 1810.1. I thought you, you would have to have like 2021 uh, 0913 minus 2020 0912, you know, two periods of time instead of just that the way the Tatham state is. Is that not correct? It's with any subtraction of a service date. So that's your rule of thumb, that note that's kind of up there towards the top of that chart. Anytime you're subtracting, you're going to add that day to give credit for that day. 
Okay, thank you. So if you're adding a service day, you don't add another day at the end of your calculation. But if you're subtracting, you add the day. Okay, got it. Thanks. Hello, where do you get the points accrued date? So, so that, that'll be, so either on your virtual MPF RIP, so you can, you can get, the members can get this on themselves and you should have MPF access to be able to get your members records, but that'll be on the bottom. So on, on that particular sheet, That'll be on the bottom of their points for their R and R year. So they'll have all their P cars. On the next page, you'll have like um, all their total points for their R and R year, and then right under that will be their points accrued to date. Now on the the GR both, what we're using from MillPDS, that'll be on the second page. Um, so you'll see on the top service history, and it'll be right next to the active duty on the very top of the report. So we'll see points accrued to date, and that'll be the date that. Um, all of these points were calculated up to, if that answers your question. It does, thank you. Hey, I have a question. If the answer has a zero in the month column, at the end, you would then borrow, is that correct? When the calculation is done? That's a good question. So is you, you're saying when you subtract the months column, it, it subtracts to zero? Correct. I had 10 yeah. in my, yeah. So so at that point, you're going to, it can't be a zero, right? Because it can't be zero months, which is, that's a very good question. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, yeah, you're going to have to borrow a year and bring Happy, a 12 thank you. over. Okay, we're, we're going to go ahead and push forward. Does anybody have any more questions? That was, you had some great questions on that. Um, you know, and so if you have any questions at all, we can always, uh, we can readdress them at the end or you can uh, email us. We can kind of go through if you have any specific scenarios and it's a little bit crazy. Um, but yeah, let, let's, let's push forward just for time's sake. Um, okay, so that was the TAFM's date, all right? Now we're doing this order, order of operation. So we need the TAFM's date to be able to calculate the 1405 service date. All right. To back up a little bit, I'm going to kind of explain what 1405 service is. Um, so just straight from the AFMAN, then I'll explain it. All right. So from the AFMAN, it's one day for each inactive duty point earned while not on active duty, limited to maximum allowable points. And when I say maximum allowable points, what I mean is you can only get credit for 365 days in a year. Okay. So if you're on continuous active duty for 365, or 366, you will not get credit for your membership points that year. Okay. So that's just kind of a sidebar side note. So for whatever R and R year you're participating, you're only going to get a max of 365. All right. Now, if you have, you're on less than 365 active duty that year, you will get added on to, to, uh, not to exceed 365. All right. Um, so that's what's, this is so what we're doing on this and i'm gonna do again i'm gonna do layman's terms what we're doing is we are getting so we're taking your total retirement points now your retirement points are everything so it's all the tds all the service that you performed it's taking all that including your membership points right and that's like everything that you've earned for the military is your retirement points all right what we're doing is we're subtracting that from your active duty time so whatever's left over that's your 1405 service. All right. So that, that includes everything, IDTs, um, you know, so, so pretty much anything, your membership points, all that is your 1405 service. Okay. So it's everything in your career, your retirement points, minus the active duty, whatever's left over, 
that's your 1405 service, all right? And if you see in the very bottom there with uh, the type duty codes, um, again, so when we're talking about that, we're talking about six, seven, eight, and nine, all right? Those are all, and obviously, and we're adding in membership points too. That's what your 1405 service is, okay? So everything else, like um, the previous slide, we're talking about active duty, that's one through five. Um, and uh, so we're talking about 1405 service or reserve or guard time. That's what we're talking about, okay? So let me see here. Now, when, we're, when we compute this, all right, so anything that, anytime we're, we're computing reserve time, we're going to be following Title 10, 12733, okay? And what that says, I don't want you to have to jump in there and look at the law, but I'll just tell you, pretty much says, well, it doesn't pretty much, it, it says that we're going we're gonna to divide that by 360. So these members are actually getting extra service, all right? So we came up with their TAPM. So now when you're dealing with an active duty or regular retirement, their pay is going to be based on their active duty that they served, all right? Their TAPMs. Um, but what, what the 1405 is, it's going to add an extra credit for these members so they actually get paid, for, paid more. So, for example, we got a member, he's got 20 years TAPMs. And he had, let's say he had um, two, two years and four months of 1405 service, okay? So all that reserve time. This member will actually get paid. So instead of the 20 years, they're going to get paid for the 22 years and four months on their pay, okay? So this is really important for these members. Again, you're not going to have to like calculate actually what that is. We're going to do that when we process their retirement, okay? So we're going to do their TAFOMs um, as of the retirement effective date. And we're going to do their 1405 credit. We're going to add all on. It's going to be nice and pretty on a retirement order. We're going to send that off to DFAS and we're going to let them process for pay. All right. What we're doing here is we're trying to find a 1405 service date so they can put that into a calculator so they can get um, an estimate of what they're going to get paid, plan for their future and whatnot. OK, so that's kind of the, the gist of it. All right. So now let's get into the calculating the actual date. Same thing before. Just going to need one document and we need. Well, in this case, we're going to need three data points, all right? So the first one is going to be that total active federal military service date that we just calculated. We're going to need that date. And then we're um, and then from the GR both, the same second page service history, we need their total retirement points and we need their total active duty points, okay? And then we're just going to subtract those two, all right? Again, with this, especially this date, this date fluctuates, all right? So this date is all depending on how, many, how much inactive duty you have, um, how many active duties? So if you, when a member comes to us and they say, you know, can I get uh, my 1405 service date? All right. I'm just going to do it up to the points accrued to date, right? I'm not going to go you know, in the future and add all the, the points that they've done so far. Once, once that uh, GR both or their points flip, I'll do it as of that date. Now, if now, so if I do it at, let's say the 19 year mark, and then after that GR both or after their, their service history, um, they're on continuous orders, this date won't change. It will change, however, if they are off of active duty orders and they go back to a traditional status. At that point, it's going to fluctuate depending on, um, again, everybody, everybody's a career is different. So it all depends on how much active duty and inactive duty they have. Okay. So when they, when they ask for their date, we're just going to do kind of like the last one, tap ones, we're going to do as of whatever the points accrued to date is. Okay. All right. So that's kind of a rundown on 1405. Does anybody have any questions about 1405 service? We do get a lot of questions via tickets. If not, we can, we can attack that at the end. Okay. So now we're going to get into the calculations. All right. So what we're going to do is, like I said before, we're going to take the retirement points and the act duty points, whatever the, the difference is, is your 1405 service. All right. Well, to be able to put it into our equation down here, we have, to, um, we have to take that 1405 service and we have to convert that into years, months, and days, all right? Like I said before, since we're dealing with just reserving guard points, the inactive time, we're gonna divide that by 360, all right? Now, we went through a couple ways to calculate this. One way was really confusing and I didn't even, I'd probably have to do like two slides just on that calculation. So I'm gonna kind of give you like, uh, you know, throw it against the wall kind of way. And kind of, this is kind of how I do it. Um, this is how I manually sub uh, divide that 1405 service by 360. All right, so let's go look over here to this blue bubble right here, this example. All right, so we're still using the same example. 
Um, what we're going to do here is we're going to, um, so when we took the, the, the 7,600 and we subtracted, so 7,600 7, is the retirement points. The 68.98 is their uh, active duty points, and we got 702. All right. So now we have to get that 702 and put that into years, months, and days. So this is kind of how I do it. All right. So I got the 702. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna throw as many three 360s into that 702 um, until I. So in this case, this is an easy one. That's why I picked this one. It's perfect. So 702. Only one 360 fits into that. A, a full three 360 days. All right. So at that point, it's one year. And then what we have left with, okay, so 702 minus that 360 is 342, okay? So now since we only had one year there, it's one year. So now we're taking the 342. Now we have to convert that into 30 days. Like I said before, the days column is always in 30s, right? So we're going to see how many months we can get out of 342. So in this case, we can throw 11 at it, right? So 11, so 11 months, that's 330 days. All right. So now we have a one year, 11 months. Now we're going to subtract that. So the 342, the total number from the years, we're going to subtract that 330 or the 11 months, and we're left with 12. And whatever the remainder is, that's your days. All right. I know that was kind of fast. Um, so in this case, this member has, um, for their 1405 service, they have one year. 11 months and 12 days. Okay. okay. All right. So kind of go down to the example, um, since we already converted it, now let's go, it's going to be the same way as we did the TAFMs. Okay. So it's going to be a subtraction equation. All right. So I'll put the TAFMs date that we previously calculated. So, um, 2002, 10, 22, and we're going to subtract that from their 1405 service. So we just we just converted from 360. So we got one year, 11 months, and 12 days. Oh, okay, all right, we're good. All right. So um, I, I was just told I, I messed up on my slide. So uh, that Tafum's date is actually 23. So uh, I'm gonna be off on one on this. Yes, yeah, so we got it. Sorry about that. All right, so we got 23 actually, right? So that previous, because uh, I forgot to add the one on the side, so it'd be 23, all right? So that's easy. So now we got 23 minus 12 is 11, not 10. So sorry, just add that one down there. So we got 11, all right? Now uh, the month column, um, like I said before, the 10 is smaller than the 11. So we're gonna borrow 12 from the years column. So now it's going to be 12 plus 10 equals 22. All right. And take that 22 and we're going to subtract it by that 1405, the month right there. So 11. So 22 minus 11 is 11. All right. And since we borrowed a, a year from the years column, it's going to be 2001. We're going to subtract that 2001 from that one year and we got 2000. So we actually have 11 November 2000. That is the 1405 service day. All right. All right. I'm going to do the same thing I did before. Did that work okay, Chief? Yes. Okay. All right. We're going to jump on then real quick. All right. Same way we did before. Hold on. We're going to, we're, we got a little. Hey, Sergeant Rossi, can you use a different marker, a darker marker, though? It was oh, yes. hard to see that. I don't know if it was red or um, what color, but. Yeah, thank you. Can she please share my screen? <laughs> All right, so here we go. Um, you ready to change to 23? Perfect. All right. So like I said before, we're just doing the same exact way, right? Doing a subtraction equation. Um, 23 October 2002, Taflin's date. And then we're going to subtract that 1405 service here, okay? So 23 minus 12 is 11, okay? Let's that look like 11. All right, so obviously the 10 is smaller than the 11. So we're going to have to borrow a year from here. So that turns it from 2002 to 2001. Okay, 
Now uh, this makes this a now a 22. Got that horrible handwriting. All right, so 22 minus 11 is now 11. Okay, 2001 minus one is 2000. And that is your 1405 service date. Same thing before, uh, take time. You guys should already have that tap room date you guys calculated. So go ahead and try to subtract that 1405 time to make that 1405 service date. I'll give you a couple minutes. Sir, do you mind, um, oh, wait talking about the 702 conversion again and how you converted the number to years, months, days. Oh, um, oh yeah, sorry. Yeah, so the, the example, okay. So yeah, so, so again, we have to divide by 360. Is that what you're talking about? To convert that 1405 service into years, months, and days, right? Correct, so, it's so a little I bit confusing. divided it and then I got lost there. Yeah, so, so I, I, I don't think I even have enough time to like, to do the division and multiplication process of this. Um, do you have a bigger number? No, my number is 624. Okay. So what you're going to do is take 624 minus 360. Okay. Divide so you're going to have one here. No, you're, you're going to, you're going to subtract it. Copy. So we're going to use subtraction. It, it just makes it a little bit easier to explain. Okay. And whatever you have left down here, we're going to convert that number into months. So we're going to try to throw as many 30 days into that, increments into that. So, so what was that again? It was, it was 623, you said, right? 624, yes. 624. Okay, well, we're going to do it on the board. All right. What happened? You guys, I need you to start your video so I can spotlight you. There you go. And then we're left with eight days. Eight days. Sorry. Or oh, sorry, is it? So it's point eight. So this will be twenty-four days. Eight months and twenty-four. Days. Oh, sorry. So we we don't have it now. So um, one year, eight months, twenty-four days. So, so this is how. Robert Scott, I'm the I'm the chief of the Reserve Service Programs, and our office covers the service date uh, updates as well as uh, we manage the IRR. Uh, just give a little bit of background about my, my uh, um, history. Uh, I've been at ARPC now for 11 years. I started in points, then I worked in retirements, and now, I've worked, now I'm working in uh, service date verification. And just to, to let you know, I do understand that, um, that service date updates and just the calculation of them can take some time uh, it's, um, I think it took uh, about two to three years before I was comfortable in this position with being able to answer many of the questions. Um, but hopefully this, this training will give you a little bit more of an understanding of what we do and also some things that can help you along the way with, uh, with your processes there in the field. Uh, next slide. We're gonna go over the FSS responsibility as far as uh, this process and then uh, look at what ARPC uh, does on your behalf. Then um, I've added some things as far as what you would need to know in order to succeed on your end, as well as uh, identifying some common errors and issues, and then also included frequently asked questions. And at the at the end, I'll um, just uh, give the references that we use to uh, calculate the dates. Next slide. As far as the FSS, the, the main thing that I want to get across is for the initial service date validation, it does need to be done during that initial gain process, or even um, as you're identifying a member that's gonna be gained, 
it's validating the dates before you actually pull the person in. Um, the updates need to be made in AFRS TF before the data is pulled over and gained. Uh, if you gain the person and they become record status 10, uh, at that point, you're going to be locked out from making any updates to pay date, total federal commission service date, or, or total year service date. Uh, at that point, then my office became, becomes the office that would have to make those updates. Um, so it's, it's really critical that you make those updates on your end as best you're able uh, prior to that gain action going in. Um, as it says, if, if we do need to make an update, it's, it's done through a my first ticket um, with all the supporting documentation. And what we're looking at is anything that identifies a period of time where a member either is enlisting, separating, or, or being appointed. And uh, I'll include it at the end too, that the, um, the AF manual 36, 2604 is the manual that we use to, uh, to update service dates. Next slide. As far as from our end, uh, we are the, the OPR after that initial gain action to be able to make any updates to those three specific uh, dates in MIL PDS. Once we receive the ticket, we're going to be verifying it and, and making sure that all the supporting documentation is there. If all the documentation isn't there, we're first off going to reach back to, um, to the unit if, uh, if we believe the record might be there as far as a DD Form 4 uh, or a um, separation order or an assignment order. Um, but we also have other databases that we can reach out to. Uh, those databases, um, we, we would look in ARMS. Uh, we'd also uh, look in uh, what's called DEPRIS. It's a defense uh, database that is able to draw records from all the other services. Um, and that is a, a real good resource to be able to find uh, information from our sister services. And once we have all that pinned down, then we go ahead with completing the validation of, of the uh, the service date itself, we're going to create a memorandum that will return in that in that MIPERS ticket. And if, for instance, it's a pay date issue, well, you can use that memorandum in a CMS case to DFAS uh, to have them correct the member's pay date at DFAS. Because the, the main concern that we would have with any of this is either if the, if the pay date gave too much longevity to a member, then the member potentially is getting paid too much. If the pay date uh, gives uh, too little service, then the member's not being paid properly for their amount of time in. And, and really the, the, the key with any of it is just making sure that, that you identify it at the beginning to, to figure out whether the member has service that's not, not accounted for. Uh, we'll also, my office will also assist in updating the total enlisted military service date that's primarily for master sergeants and senior master sergeants, um, as well as the deuce and then the DERF date. Um, if, the, if, if you are unable to do it from your end, uh, but generally um, the member should first check with you on those dates. Next slide. In order to succeed, the, the, the primary thing that we would ask you to do is when you have a member who is, is coming into uh, a unit, uh, whether it's brand, brand new or uh, when they are coming from a different service, review all the supporting documentation, ask the member, uh, especially if they are, are not just a, a, a totally new member into the military, but ask them whether they've served in another service or even in the, in the Air Force itself at a prior time. Because in all those cases, if it, it would be a, it potentially is a break in service, and so we want to want to account for that. Uh, I also recommend that you look at their points history, if they are coming to your unit from another one, um, because in looking at that points history, number one, you're going to find out whether a history exists at all. If a history doesn't exist, then that needs to be updated first. I would recommend that you submit a my first ticket to the points management branch to have their points history updated. And then we've got an arrangement with the points management branch that if they see a break in service and they believe that the, that the pay date is not correct, they'll forward a ticket to my office to review the pay date after they have done their initial audit 
and uh, and and made the members points history. So we do work hand in hand in that. Um, but I, I recommend that you have the points history updated as a first action before it comes to my office. Um, we do get the occasional one where we get them before points management does. And if that's the case, then we'll we'll do our validation if we're able to with the points, or excuse me, with the uh, the pay date. And we'll create a ticket back to points management for them to do a, an initial audit on those members uh, when it's warranted. Next slide. Some common errors that we've come across is in the calculation, uh, you have to keep in mind that delayed entry program is non-creditable for the vast majority of people that we have currently serving. There was a period of time back in the uh, mid, mid 80s where DEP was creditable, but many of our, many of our members today uh, don't fall under that. So DEP by and large is a non-creditable period for pay. That, however, does establish their due date when and their date initially entered uniform service. So the, 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 the date they entered delayed enlistment is important. It establishes the beginning of their military service obligation, but it isn't creditable for pay for the, the vast majority of people. Also, ROTC um, or attendance at the Air Force Academy is a non-creditable period for pay, total federal commission service date, and total year service date. Uh, and that applies if the member got a commission. We have instances where members went to uh, ROTC or the Air Force Academy and did not complete that course of training. They didn't get commissioned and now they're at a unit. That period is creditable for pay so long as the member never receives a commission. And what I mean by that is if a member comes to the unit and they're enlisted, that period is creditable. If they get a commission now within your unit or, or later in their career, we would go back and edit or change the pay date to now make those earlier periods non-creditable. The other, the other thing I want to, uh, to make known is that all members who come into the service have an initial military service obligation of eight years. When you're looking at their documents, especially when they're coming from regular Air Force, if you see at the bottom of the 214 that the member came from regular Air Force and that they were separated or released, then they are continuing on to complete that. Or chances are they're continuing on to complete their military service obligation. Um, they, they have to finish eight years, regardless whether that's in REGAF or a combination of regular Air Force and the reserve component. Now, if you see a discharge on that 214, then that waives any MSO that the member has. Um, and you can also look at the uh, SPD code, the separation code at the bottom. If it begins with a K, then that's it. That is a, a discharge action. And that is a waiver of any MSO that the member had. So that we completely drop out at that point. Uh, when they come to the unit, they would need to, to enlist with a new contract and so forth. But if they are just being released from regular Air Force and they're still within that eight year window from due state forward eight years, then they still have an obligation either in the IRR or with your unit. Um, so that uh, that would not be a break in service. Um, and also, if they're in the IRR, uh, that is creditable for pay. I've had some recent uh, tickets that have come into my office where folks um, are misunderstanding that and thinking that service in the IRR is not credible for pay or for service. And in fact, uh, it truly is. It, it affects their pay date, but it also affects their service on the, the, the officer side as far as um, their commission service. Next slide. Now some frequently asked questions uh, that we get. Why is my due state in MILPDS the same as my entrance state on active duty? One thing we did find prior to 2016 is that the data that active duty was taking from AFRS TF was incorrect. The data in AFRS TF had the member's start date, their due date, as the same day that they went to active duty. It was it usually was not until they came to the reserve that we had that we corrected that. Um, and it, it 
it altered or, or caused problems because their military service obligation was was not properly calculated. And so that's that's an important thing to check when when the members come to the unit, if they entered the military prior to 2016, please check their due state to make sure that's correct because that will determine what their military service obligation end date is. The next question, does time in, served in the IRR count toward pay? Yes, it does. Does time on the inactive status list reserve section count toward overall commission time? Yes, it does. Uh, the one thing with time in Islers, though, is that time in Islers does not allow a member to accrue any points and they don't get any satisfactory service. So there are a number of different different rules there that, that apply. Um, next question, does DPAMR update the uh, total active federal military service date? And the answer to that is no, we don't. Um, ARPC retirements is the OPR for that uh, on the reserve side and the uh, Human Resource Office for the Air National Guard uh, would update those dates. Uh, ne next question, does DPAMR update the expiration term of service for a unit member? Uh, on the reserve side, no, that's the Wing Career Assistance Advisor, um, the MPF for Air National Guard, and for IMAs, uh, we have a section here at ARPC that updates their expiration term of service. Next slide. Okay, these are the, the tools that we use. The primary ones, we've already made reference, and, and even in the previous training that you had today, uh, AFMAN 362604, Service Dates and Dates of Rank, uh, is a is a crucial uh, reference to 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 go to for service dates, but also the DoD Financial Management Regulation 7000.14-R, Volume 7A. Um, real long name, but um, but that's one that that tells us what periods of service are actually creditable for pay and what what is not. Um, and there's also a PSD guide out um, out there as well for uh, updating military service dates and making those corrections in mil pds uh, hopefully the, this overview has been a, been a helpful one and i'm open for, for any questions that you might have at this point thanks mr scott anyone that has any question please go ahead and raise your hand or you can come off your microphone and ask mr mr scott your question Okay, nothing heard for Mr. Scott. We're gonna go back to our retirements team just for a moment. They're gonna actually show you guys, I know some of you had a burning desire to maybe see that um, 360 day, that conversion that was happening. So we're gonna turn it back over to them in just a moment. And I am going to pause myself again um, and I will come back on in just a second. Hi, good morning, everyone. This is Tech Sergeant Ramirez from ARPC. Um, I'm one of the retirement technicians. I will talk to you about regular to reserve retirement conversions, which is the 12471. Slide. Our agenda for today, we will talk about uh, roles and responsibilities, retirement conversion, reason to convert, eligibility checklist, determining eligibility, and we'll give you some examples to it, how you will apply, what to expect, and some question and answer portion. All right, for roles and responsibilities. Here at ARPC, um, our responsibility is to manage the application for the um, reserves, and we will verify eligibility for request retirement dates. Um, our retirement technician are available to answer questions and process transactions regarding the conversion. For the FSS, MPF, and WING advisors, um, you will need to be able to provide your um, customer service to your members, 
have knowledge of overall requirements, provide retirement counseling, and assist members with submitting their request. For the member themselves is to formally request the 12 uh, 741 memo in writing and submit through my purse. This is when they reach their age 60 and have, or if, or if they have a confirmed RRPA date. And to also make sure that they have a complete requirements for this conversion. And the DPAS um, roles and responsibility is to process their retirement pay package, uh, which they make sure that they got their new pay in effect on time. Slide. What is a retirement conversion? Retirement conversion is basically regular to reserve conversion. This is under Title 10 USC Section 12, 741, Chapter 1223. This law authorized a member to convert their active duty retired pay to reserve retired pay. Under AFI, 36-3203, paragraph 7.7.3. This is described as a retired active component members who completed two years of reserve credible service minus the active duty days after completion of 20 years of TAPMs, um, they may convert this active duty retired pay to the reserve retired pay. Normally, again, at age 60 or under a group RRPA date. Slide. The most reason that um, the member convert, these are basic two reasons, um, is the potential uh, promotion potential. Because if the member still participate in the reserve position after retiring with, re with a regular retirement, they can get promoted while assigned in the reserve component. Time and grade is still applies for officer and must be met. So for the first uh, lieutenant to captain, they still need six months time and grade and for 04 major and above, they will still need three years of time and grade. However, this can be done in just satisfactory service. So three years of satisfactory service. Another example is um, when the member has reached a full 20 years of TAPMs, but has not met time and grading requirements, member opts to continue participating in a reserve position to either gain that required time and grade or to promote to their next grade. Another reason is the member is still participating. So they keep earning this retirement that they can increase the retired pay. Another example is member reach 20 years of TAPMs and chooses to continue participating in a reserve. Member may convert retirement to the retirement. Next slide. Eligibility checklist. So here are some of our standard criteria. First and foremost, um, the member must have 20 years of TAPMs. This is the first thing that we look. Without 20 years of TAPMs, they will not be eligible for the rest of the criteria that we're looking for. So after they have completed it, their 20 years of TAPMs, they must be closer to their age 60 or have an approved RRPA date. Member also need to elect to receive retired pay in writing. So they have to submit the memo. And we have this um, letter, specific memo formatted for the member to use. It will be available online. And also the member needs to meet the 730 day rule. It has to be 730 days of reserve satisfactory service after completing 20 years of TAPMs. When talking about satisfactory years, the member must meet at least two good satisfactory years of additional reserve time. The caveat for this is that the active duty days are non-qualifying. 
So if you pull up your PCARS history or point credit summary, somewhere at the bottom we will show you the type of duty that's our qualifying and non-qualifying. Basically the non-qualifying ones are the numbers from one through five. Some example of this are like annual training, RPA, MPA, schools and deployments. Five of these examples, those one through five numbers will be excluded count from the 730 day rule. And the qualifying ones will be the numbers six through nine. An example of this are UTAs, the, some of the acceptable ones are UTAs, flight training program, even PT time is also qualified for those 730 days. All right, on this next one, this is more like an icing on a cake um, per DOTI. The member who are served after April 27, 2001 and before October 28, 2009, they are exempt for any reserve service requirements such as this 730 day rule. However, they still will need require the 20 years of TAPMS, which is also equivalent for having the 20 years of satisfactory service. That they still need to have that, but they are exempted to that 730 day rule. Last but not least, is more of a um, reminder for the members. Um, when the member is electing to convert retirement using their confirmed RRPA date, they do not qualify for TRICARE until age 60. So some members, they make a calculation of how much pay they will get if they convert into the reserve retirement. A scenario example of this is um, if the member, some member will have like, for example, they only get $100 of extra pay when they convert it to reserve retirement. However, when they find out that their medical benefits are not covered, then they'll have to pay extra $100 to, to get an outside medical coverage. So they decided they want to stay in their active duty pay until they reach age 60. Then they can convert their um, retirement to reserve retirement so that they can, they can still have that covered um, medical retirement through that age 60 and then have that extra $100 after they reach age 60 and get that reserve retirement pay. Next slide. This is just an example of determining, determining eligibility of um, looking at the point credit summary. For this example, this is an officer, a Lieutenant Colonel, with a close out date of their points on the date of 19 September, 2022. The member has accrued 21 years, six months and 29 days of TAPMS. On the next slide, it shows here on the right-hand corner for the satisfactory service, the member also had 20 years of satisfactory service, more than 20 years. So at this case, he has 20 years, five months and 12 days. And all the way down at the bottom, you will see the history stat code, which is XF. XF shows when the member was transferred to retired active duty. So it's nice to know the code, what the meanings are. If you go look up um, a line after, uh, before XF, it says FR. FR code means um, they are in regular active duty. And then after they serve active duty for 20 years, they are placed in that active duty retired pay list, which is an XF. And then 
the next line, it will show their code as FV. That shows when the member returned to the service in a reserved component. Next slide. So now I, I can show you how we calculate the 730 day rule. To determine the 730 day rule, you will have to look at, look at the uh, r, r year for the January 6, 2006 uh, through January 5, 2007, that first r, &R year on the reserve timeframe. In one r, &R year, you have 365 days. So that 365 days, you will deduct the 82 days, 82 days of their active time, active time. And you will see that uh, the active duty time is highlighted in pink or salmon color. So you will see in that time frame, the member has 82 days of active duty time. So you will have the 365 days within that whole r, &R year minus subtracted with the 82 days of active, du active duty time. And the difference is 283 days. And that is your qualified reserve days. When you count the years, you will also have to consider leap years on every four years increments from four even years. So for example, even year, um, leap year will be every four years from two, year 2000. So in this case, in the r, r year ending January 2008, we will use 366 rather than 365. So you add just one day for the leap year. So 365 days minus their active duty time, which is 65 is equals 301. And then you keep continuing doing that subtraction all the way down to 2011. After you get all the difference, you add the difference together, then you will have a total of 1,478 qualifying reserve days. So this, this qualifies the member because it's more than 730 day reserve days. So how, that's how you calculate it. All right, example number two, this shows the ineligibility of a member. This member is a tax sergeant, he's enlisted. And the point credit summary shows the closeout date is September 19 of 2022. He earned 20 years, four months, and six days of TAPMs. So that part, he's good. But on the next slide, All right, this member also good with satisfactory years of 22 years, seven months and 19 days. So he had 20 years of tapins, 20 years of satisfactory service. He made it through um, active duty retired list. You can see that with their code XF and then transfer over to the reserve time. As you can see the FB code he had two years of reserve time. He did have two good years of satisfactory service. However, on the next slide, when you calculate their days of reserve time, so you take their whole year and year of 2003 and 2007. So you go 365 days for 2003 minus their active duty time, which is 27, you have 338 days. And on the ending year of 2004, which is a leap year, so you have to use 366 days. And then you subtract their active duty days for 30 days. They have a, a difference of 336 days. And when you add that up, all their reserve days, 338 plus 336 from 2004. They only have accumulated 674 qualifi qualifying reserve days. Therefore, there are short 56 days from the 730 day rule. 
So obviously this member did not make it. It makes him ineligible for 7, 12 741 conversion. Next slide. All right. So for this one is the exception, exemption scenario. Um, here we are looking at Lieutenant Colonel um, Picars. This point credit summary is closed out on 31 August, 2022. He did earn more than 20 years of TAPM. So he got 20 years, one month and 20 days of TAPMs. Next slide. So with the satisfactory years, he got 21 years, 11 months and zero days. So he did have all his 20 years transfer over, he retired transfer over to active duty retired list and went back in again, served in reserve, um, reserve component or reserve time or drill status. And so he had two, he had one good, um, he had one good satisfactory year and one partial year, as you can see here. So if you go to the next slide. So he had one satisfactory years and one partial year. And if you added all those, we even have to go through all that because as per DOTI or Department of Defense instruction, the member who are served after April 27, 2001 and before October 28, 2009, they are exempted for any reserve service requirements, which is the 730 date. So we won't, we won't even matter calculating all that because we can see in there the dates that they were served all the way from 2001 through 2007. So they are exempted. Next slide. So how do you apply? Applying conversion 12741 is not automatic for the member. They still need to go online and apply for themselves. And applying online, they need to submit the memo that we formatted for, for the member. And this is the, what it looks like. So you will put the member's information, the name on top, you will put the retirement effective date and that will be when they turn age 60 or if they have that date. You put the rank and date the memo. You have, uh, you can apply three months prior to their 60th birthday or 90 days, or if they have that approved or three months prior to their reduced retired pay age date. And they have to submit this memo to headquarters ARPC, DPTTR, VMI PERS. Next slide. All right, this is how online, what it looks like online. So a member will need to create the ticket and VPC. You log into your My PERS and then on the top left corner, you click on incidents and messages. Next slide. All right, after you click there, the screen will pop out. On the corner, you will see email us. You'll click in there. Once you click, this is what it looks like. And you will go through the component and Click the drop down menu and you can select which component will serve national retiree. And then you will select officer or enlisted. Then under category, it will be retirement. You will see the red paragraph in here. Please pay attention to this. Make sure that the member doesn't put any PII information in the box, anywhere in the subject or question box. A lot of members still does this. They put their social security number and this site is insecure. It can still be intercepted. It's not encrypted. So 
just remind them do not put any PII information in it. On the subject line matter, it must be in specific wording as what it says here, it has to be retirement conversion slash 12741 conversion. Under the question block, you can put some memo in there, just what it says in here, or you can put as simple as please process my application for 12741 conversion. Then make sure that the memo of that the memo is basically your application, so make sure that the member attached that memo in there. So you click continue, and that should be submitted. Slide. So what can you expect? What the member can expect is that once ARPC received this ticket, we will be able to assign it to a technician for audit to determine their eligibility. For the el eligible member, they will have the 12741 letter that we created, and then it will be approved and signed by our, by our division chief. Once approved, the 12741 letter will be sent to DPS along with the retirement package. So the member will have a new retirement uh, order generated. We generated that for them, and we will email a copy of that new order to the member. For the ones who are ineligible, they will receive notice of an explanation why are they are not qualified. Next slide. So again, question and answer, this is more of a um, review again. So just foot, foot stopping on what we have already discussed. First question is while serving in the reserve after retiring from active duty, can they be promoted? Yes, they are eligible for a promotion as long as they meet their time and grade. When will the retirements be available in my FSS, which is now our sales force? We are projected and our goal is to have it available and ready on 1 February, 2023. More to follow on that. Another question is, when should a member apply for conversion? Again, they can apply three months ahead or 90 days ahead before they reach their age 60 or if they have an approved RRPA date. Another question is, when should the ticket, uh, what should the subject line be? So subject line, remember, this must be written as is. It has to be retirement conversion slash 12741 conversion. And then you add the member's last name and their first initial. How does this impact the medical benefits? So medical coverage will begin on the member's 60th birthday. Medical benefits under member's regular retirement will no longer be eligible for the same benefits upon conversion. The last question is, does the conversion impact reserve component or uh, component survivor benefit plan or RCSBP? The, the RCSBP election will remain the same. It, it will be the same as what they have applied on the very beginning on their active duty SBP. So whatever SBP they made in the election, it will be the same for their RCSBP. And they will not they will not be given another opportunity to change that election upon their conversion. So here's our reference, Title 10, USC Section 12, 741, Chapter 1223, and also the AFI 3632-03, paragraph 7.7.3, .7 which is the service retirement conversion. So if you have any retirement specific training topic ideas, comments, or concern. Uh, please contact our Dep Deputy Division Chief, Major Eggman, and that's her email address in there. Um, this will help us if you have any additional training topics that you want us to discuss in future field training. Thank you.